What's going on everyone? My name is Cedric and today I'm going to talk to you about the 10 golden rules of climbing. There are a bunch of rules I've put together that'll help you uh, be a safer climber and more efficient climber. So let's jump right into it. The first rule is always double tying in whenever you're using any kind of saw. I know you've heard this so many times and it's ANSI standards, but it can be pretty easy to slip into this bad habit of not putting your lanyard around the trunk of the tree or putting your climbing line around a uh, crotch before you use a handsaw or chainsaw. It's just extremely easy to nick a rope and if you don't have that second point in, then you're easy to fall to the ground. So uh, this is, I know it's so easy to do, but just make a good habit of it and always double tie in. The second rule is cut small and roping small. And I know as a climber, we always want to cut out big, huge pieces because it may be quicker, but it actually does more harm to your equipment. There's more increased chances of accidents happening. It's harder on the ground crew. Um, it's just all around kind of mucks up the system. So get to the spot where you need to, to cut things out smaller, rig smaller. It's going to greatly reduce all the chances of accidents happening all around. The third rule is knowing what will happen. And it applies mostly to cutting, but it could also apply to pretty much any action that you do or have in the tree. Um, by predicting and knowing what's going to happen before you do it, then this pretty much increases the safety and efficiency of everything and the chance of an accident happening is pretty much zero. And this could even go back to cutting things smaller because they're easier to control. Um, they're kind of uh, connected these rules. So just if you don't know what's going to happen, then, you know, talk to people, make a different work plan. Just always make sure that you know exactly what's going to happen before you do it. The fourth rule is being comfortable. And this is mostly applies to you as the climber because it can be mentally straining. It can take all your energy out. If you're having a really uncomfortable time in the tree, it can hurt your body. Um, so it could be something so small as having a, the right tie in or using a, a, a smaller saw or only taking up the hand saw if it's just some small limbs you got to get. Um, you know, there's so many different ways that you can make yourself comfortable. It just really will help you most of all as the climber in the tree to uh, do what you need to do. The next rule is talk to your crew. And this mostly is before you come to a problem or you don't know how to do something. Getting your crew involved is first off important because they have a different perspective than you do because they're on the ground. Um, it can also make them feel involved. It can boost the morale of the crew. And even if they don't know uh, as much as you do, it can still help to talk out loud and brainstorm with other people to come up with a good plan of how to tackle the issue. So always talk to your crew whenever you need to. The next rule is if you have any doubt, then don't do it. Uh, I think this applies a lot to like climbing dead trees, but it could also be before you're cutting any kind of piece or rigging it, anything like that. If you're not sure, like with dead trees, you're never like, maybe if you think there's a bunch of root rot or anything like that, you can always take a step back, talk to someone like the salesman or anything like that, get another climber involved and either don't do it or come up with a better plan um, because you don't want to put yourself in this situation where you're really not sure of what's going to happen because you're in a dead tree or, you know, if you're dropping out of top, you always just, uh, you want to make sure hundred percent that it'll go smoothly. So any doubts, just don't do it. The next rule, and I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times, but I think it's extremely important. It's don't one hand the chainsaw. It's one of those habits where it's so easy to get into of, of just always using one hand on the chainsaw. I know there's so many moments where you want to outstretch 
and use it because you can't get both hands on it, but you should always take the extra time to set up whatever position you need to be in, set up any kind of rigging system, because the truth is when you one hand the chainsaw, you really don't have full control of it. And there's been so many accidents that I've read over the years and fatalities that's happened to people all because they have one handed chainsaw and any kind of kickback, it just comes right back at them and you can't stop it. If you have any, uh, if you have any care for your life at all, you would put two hands in the chainsaw. This is, this is absolutely, I think, a very important rule for the safety of you. It's not gonna hurt anyone else around you. This is all just for you. So make sure you always keep two hands on the chainsaw. The next rule is take more time to set up a good time point. And this kind of goes with the be comfortable rule. It, uh, it sounds pretty hard to like on the ground whenever you're setting up the time point with a throw ball. Sometimes it's hard to hit the spot. Um, it's definitely well worth it. But if you even need to have like someone else hit the throw ball because you're having a bad throw ball day or get the big shot out, take a little more time to get that spot because it's gonna help you. Because the climb may be like four hours long and your time point is like really bad or you take like another half hour to go up in the entire tree to reset it or something like that. It's easy because it's just throwing the throw ball. Um, it'll make your job so much more comfortable. The limb walking, getting where you need to be is gonna be easier. Um, so yeah, do what you need to do to get that good time point and it'll make uh, the job go a little smoother. Um, the next rule is never come down from pruning a tree. Well, this applies just to pruning. So never come down from the tree until you've gotten the perspective of the ground crew. And basically what I mean by that is anytime you're doing building clearance, deadwood, uh, raising canopies, anything like that that's pruning, you don't always, uh, you can't see everything from in the tree. And also the perspective of the ground crew is what the client is gonna see because there's gonna be on the ground. So even though it may look like six feet of building clearance to you, it could look like three from the ground. Um, so you might as well just go back another three feet because the clients can be like, well, why didn't they do this? Or if you're deadwooding a tree, it's pretty hard to spot all the deadwood when you're in the tree. So you get your ground crew, like, do you see anything else before I come down? Because the worst thing that happens is when you come down from the tree and you look back up and you see something that you missed and you have to go all the way back up in there. It's extremely frustrating. So always get their perspective before you come down. The last, the last rule is using the right equipment for the job. And this kind of goes with um, being comfortable. It kind of, it, it's definitely a time saver. It's definitely a, a energy saver for your body. Um, Cause using the wrong equipment usually means more uh, work for you, more strain on your body, especially if it's like a small chainsaw on a huge trunk, you know, that can be really frustrating and difficult. Um, so go ahead and get your ground crew. If you don't have it on you, tell them, yeah, send me this up. And you may have to send something down to them to make room for it. anything you can do. Just make sure you're always using the right equipment for the job. There's so many things that can mean, but, as a climber, you'll get used to it and then you'll know exactly what you need to do. Often as climbers, we're pressured to do the job quickly um, and properly and also safely. And it kind of is, can be difficult to navigate. It pulls us in different directions because they're all kind of trying to do something different. But hopefully these rules, was, as you follow them, can kind of help you prioritize the safety of you and everyone around you while also helping you do the job properly and completing your work quickly because the longer you are able to do this the faster you'll become the more skills you'll gain um, and the better you'll get at your job but the problem is you have to be alive to get to that point and that's why we want to prioritize being safe and emphasize that point so much because at the end of the day, this is your life in your hands and you're the only one who can take these steps to uh, get to that point. Um, I hope you have a successful and safe career and I will see you in the canopy.